Hello, Akko here again. Welcome back to my little single player world where I'm doing a Feed the Beast Monster Beginner's Guide. We are up to episode 9 and the plan for today is to cover these items on the list. I've not capitalised that and I have the rest which is going to bother me if I don't change it. Um, so I'm just going to quickly start by upgrading our altar to a tier 3. Um, I might have to come back to that actually because I need to start building the second floor for that and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. Um, I'm going to do a couple of, just touch on a couple of farm upgrades. So we did the farms last time, we've got all the tree farm up there and we've got our little um, cotton farm down there. And then, never, far, never lie there, we're going to make a thing called an endothermic pump which is a pump that can only pump lava in the nether. You can set it in the config to pump lava in different dimensions, but by default it will only work in the nether. And it chunk loads itself, and we're going to need an engine to power that, and an ender tank to take the lava back here. So we'll be doing a bit of messing around with that. We're going to use a, a, dynam a dynamo from thermal expansion for that. We're going to use a magmatic dynamo, so we're going to make one of them. And that's going to get us onto thermal expansion. So we'll make a few thermal expansion machines that we can run off that. And if we get time, we'll get onto Redstone Arsenal. And we'll make a little jerky farm to give us a solid food source. Because we're getting plenty of uh, rotten meat from zombies that we're killing. So we might as well use it. So we can use it by making a little farm once we've got some thermal expansion stuff. Now we've got a little bit of thermal expansion stuff. We've used a little bit on making the pipes for our farms here. So... These item ducts are from Family Expansion, as are these l um, low power conduits. Now what I've done is, I, in fact I will touch on the farm upgrade. You see how slow this is? It's, got, it's had a couple of issues. One of them is the leaves, when the oaks can grow really big, and the leaves sometimes get a little bit too far out. So what I've made, well, what I've got left, is I've already moved this out a little bit. I'm going to move it out a little bit more. And uh, what I've done is, I've just made a couple more engines because it's not quite keeping up as you can see. So I'm going to make a, I'm gonna add a couple more of these um, photovoltaic cells onto here. Move that one out a bit so the trees don't get to it. Now what would what, what would be nice to do would be to make a capacitor for this. So that these can actually store energy when they're not using it. But what they'll do is they'll store a certain amount of energy in here, in here when it's... When all the work's done. So that's producing 3MJ a tick now. So that's working a little bit little bit harder. And it's fair out so the leaves won't get in the way and block it. So as long as the sun's shining, that's that done. So that's upgraded a little bit. We've got nine stacks of wood, which is not a massive amount, but it's not bad. It's not bad. And this is filling up with saplings. Once we've got this all full of saplings, uh, sorry, this all full of wood, we'll swap these barrels out. We'll put them to one side and we'll put rubber in there and get some rubber and stuff on that as well. So we can do different trees. While I mention it, there is a tree called a Secura tree, which has got pink leaves. Now, um, I don't remember if I've actually seen any out and about. Uh, I don't actually know, I don't see any at a glance. But um, Secura wood grows very quick. So if you want these for a pure wood, if you're going to use it to run your coal. Um, to make it to charcoal, for example, or stuff like that, then you might want to use secure trees. Be aware, though, that the the, do the wood didn't used to work in all kinds of uh, wood recipes. Some of them won't work. Like, it'd make you a pink crafting table. Um, like this one. That's a crafting table made out of pink wood. I think it's secure from Sakura. That's Eucalyptus. Hmm. But some of these Natura woods don't always work, so if you want to make a crafting table for a recipe, so a crafting table can go into lots of other things, like a rolling machine, sometimes the Natura one doesn't work for that, so look, you can't make a rolling machine out of it. So be aware of that, anyway. I like to use oak because it's a good, steady, solid wood. Uh, but Birch, also got any of the vanilla woods, so I mean, it's jungle wood. Jungle wood makes massive trees, though, it can be an issue sometimes. Anyway, that's uh, that's that upgrade a little bit, so that'll run a little bit quicker now. And while we're at it, we might as well do the upgrade on the other farm as well then. So for that, we're actually going to need a little bit more rubber, which I might not have. We've got any rubber. And we've got a little bit. So what I want to do with this is, I actually want to cook three bits of this up even more than what it is. Now we're not actually going to use this in here, I just want to show you how to make it. So, what I'll do is... Um, 
got a little bone mill there. I was crushing some bone mill in the grinder. At that minute, my lava crystal is in there. So we'll just smelt this in here. I'm going to smelt these rubber bars. We'll put that on two. All smelting. Because I had it set to alloys only just for the for the making of them extra phot photovoltaic cells there. Now, these things, we can speed these up, by the way. We can put things in here called capacitors. And there are your, because there's these things. Um, there's a basic one that we've used already. We use the basic one in making these items. We can upgrade it to a double layer and then to an octadic. And the octadic and the double layer, they increase the fuel capacity and the speed. You put one in there and it speeds things up quite quite significantly. So that's worth bearing in mind for later on. Also, from Ender I.O., I'd like to make one of these things at some point. That needs some of the double layer ones on a block of redstone. So oof, I'm not quite ready to make that yet. Yeah, well, we could make that. Try and go into that. What that does, what we could do with that is we could use that to store some power for the farm there, so it can wet during the night and stuff if it if the trees grow. But well, it's not not that big a deal. The the MFR planter and the harvester have got a certain amount of internal storage, so it's not a massive big deal. I'm still forgetting that I've got pressure plates there. Um, so let's head over here to this one. Now, this one. So three by three, which is what we actually want to keep it to be honest at the minute, because this is again it's passive, it's not getting as much, but it's getting us a little bit. There is a couple of things we can do to upgrade this. This is getting enough power, as you can see, these don't grow quick enough to make a massive difference to be honest. But um, what we could do is a couple of things we can do is one of them we can if we break all these down a bit. There's certain things in the game that increase growth speed. Now crops are one of them. If you remember, we've got these. These and these are all on things called crops from industrial craft. They speed up the growth rate of them. Um, unfortunately, these cannot grow on crops, these cotton seeds. What we can do, though, is if we dig this dirt up, like so, what we can do with this is, this is from a mod called Random Mob, uh, Random, Random what? At random, Random Things. And what we can do is, if we put some, Let's get into my crafting area. Uh, we've put some rotten flesh and some bone meal around. I've done that the wrong way around. There we go. We've put bone meal and rotten flesh around some dirt. We get this stuff called fertilized dirt. So we want nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down. And then we put these back and replant these. Now this has got a bit of a growth accelerant on it. So these will grow a bit quicker. The other things we can do, of course, is we can use our sigil of the green grove. Um, that'll make things grow quick. As you'll see, these will pop right up really quick. This is mostly the green grove doing this. So, um, they're growing very quick. So, that's one thing we can do. Pretty soon, when we get to tier 4 of, of blood magic, we can actually make a, a ritual that can go underneath here. And then they'll, then they'll grow even quicker. And the... The rituals can go underneath everything, um, but that's going to make them grow. That dirt's one way of making them grow a little bit quicker. We've also, from a mod called Reliquary, we have got a thing called a lily pad of fertility that um, you make and you put onto your water source in the middle. So we've got a, a water source there with a normal lily pad. We could swap that for a fertility one, and that that'd make things grow quicker as well. But generally, you find that things that grow stuff, only one of them will work. So these are growing quicker because of the crops. If we had a lily pad of fertility there, it wouldn't make a difference because these are already got a growth boost. The the quickest growth boost seems to be the blood magic one. Um, there's also the watering can, which we've got in the seeds up there. We could put the same setup down here with a watering can, spraying over stuff, but uh, or even doing it manually if we wanted manually if we wanted to. But uh, there we go. That's uh, that's a farm upgrades bit done. Now I'm going to head up here. Let's uh, tick that off. So, oops, it's not that farm upgrade's done at all. I haven't done it yet. Uh, the other thing is, I want to show you how to increase the, increase the range of these. Now, I'm not going to make this. I just wanted to show you. Because at the minute, the range of that's fine. So, I'm going to save the resources for other stuff. I don't want to be in there. We'll go in there. Oh, it's full. I'm just going to go in there. Um, so, what we can do, we can make things called upgrades. Now, there's your basic, most basic one. It's a, it's a radius upgrade of one. What I normally do, if I do anything, I'll do a three which is radius 3, 
So, for example, if you look at the way farms are laid out, because now these don't actually need a water source anymore with this dirt, because this dirt's special. But this dirt needs water, this tilled dirt needs a water source within four blocks of it. So you see, four, four each way gives you a nine by nine area, yeah? This thing by default has a three by three, by three area. So if you increase the radius by three, it gives it a radius of three that way, a radius of three that way, three that way, three that way, makes it into a nine by nine. So if you use the radius three, so oops, if we were to make that guy there with tin, so some of this raw plastic, a couple of bits of redstone gold nugget and some tin, and these go all the way up to about 15 I think. What's there? 10. So that would be 20, 23 in total. 10 each way and plus 3 that it starts with. And what they do, they just go into that slot there. So you see they've got a little slot there that you can drop one of them in. So that's what we'd use this raw plastic for. Hello. Go away. Um, that's what we could use the raw plastic for if we wanted to make a little bit bigger farms. As it is though, we're not using a great deal of stuff. If you find that you're using, say if we're using reeds to, as our main power source and you're going through loads of it, you'd maybe want a nine by nine and you'd want it you'd want it speeding up with rituals and stuff. Look at all the mobs coming out there. There's a big dark area under the ground under the water there from when I messed up the well gen. So mobs spawning it even during the day and head over here because they, they don't burn when they're swimming. Right, so now we've covered that. So next, really quickly, I've got to kind of rush through everything in this to try and fit stuff in. I don't want to I don't want to do episodes that don't really have much in. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut in a minute. Because um, I planned to do this earlier and I forgot all about it. I went to get some cobble to do it and then I forgot all about it. What we're going to do, we're going to upgrade the altar. Now the next altar gets quite a bit bigger. It's going to be... We're going to have more of these runes around the outside and they're going to be one level lower down so they're going to be actually where these blocks are and instead of having three down each side I'm going to have five down each side and we're going to have little pillars and stuff like that which I'll, I'll get to in a minute but because it's going to be bigger then tier four and tier five are bigger and bigger still so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another floor on here I'm going to lay out roughly what we need for a full tier five altar up there just so we've got the space laid out and then we don't have to keep knock, knocking this apart each time we want to upgrade. So I've got the bits ready there. I've got the stuff we need to make more of these runes of self-sacrifice. So we need 40 more of them. Um, sorry, we need 40. We need 20 more of them. Five down each side. I actually need another four to replace these four. Because once we upgrade to a tier three, we can we can replace these as well. So I'll, I'll get that done. And um, I'll be back when I'm ready to go with that. Back in a bit. Okay then, here I am, I've laid down a floor, and what I've done is I've got a lot of dirt and I've laid out, this is this is the footprint of a tier 5 alt there, but flattened. Now, we're going to get back to this in just a minute, I'm going to go on a little tangent, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to go a little tangent just a minute. Now, this was full, so I drank it all and I got 40 levels, and I used that 40 levels to copy the repair book there. So I've got some repair books, and I used one of the repairs, I've got another 10 levels that I'd started reading in there. got another 10 levels to put repair onto my... I'm a chest plate here, so we've got a couple of spare repair books as well now that can go up in the armour bookshelf up there. It's going to be the armour one, I think. So it's got some protection fours up there already, and now it's got some armour ones. We need to start working on some weapon ones pretty soon, like uh, efficiency, um, sharpness, all that kind of stuff. We've got, and we've got an unbreak in from here. Um, but it reminded me, uh, I got a message from someone saying that I'd skipped something uh, a few episodes back. And I had, I went back and checked. And I seem to have lost a little bit of footage. And I just want to cover what I did. Now, the start, I think, episode 6, I was in the nether. And possibly episode 7, I started in the nether. Two episodes, I started in the nether. One of them I was looking for a nether fortress. And the second one, I was actually in a, a blaze spawner. So what I actually missed was, if I come through here... The first video that I did, I was down here somewhere. Um, when I came to the nether, I was searching and I was in this... Oh yeah, I was over here somewhere. I was looking for a blaze spawner. I was down here somewhere, my actual input, my, my entrance way. It's just over there somewhere. So I came along there, I came, I, I dug up into this fortress there. I came across and I'd been round here. I was looking round in here for a blaze spawner. Well, that was the first 
episode I did in the Nether, and then I said I was gonna cut, go find one, and then cut back. And I actually I recorded me cutting back, but I, I've somehow lost it. So I've I've checked back, so I must have actually deleted that bit by mistake. So I actually found a blaze spawner, which is this one. And then the second episode, I showed you and me in here fighting blazes. Um, get my sword in my hand, that'll help, won't it? But I've showed you me starting in here, oops. Fighting blazes with my looting sword. I'm getting um, getting some blaze rods. And anyway, I bought me saying this is the perfect size 8x8 square to trap as many as possible so none of them spawn outside and stuff like that. So that was one of the things I covered. Um, and then what I also missed as well though was two things. One, I'd made this bloodwood bow, and two, I made this chest chestplate. Now the chest chestplate is really simply it's just found with ingots. And I had showed you how to make the, the helmet which used found with ingots as well. So that's one of the things I covered in that bit that I missed. And another thing was this bloodwood bow. Now if we come across to... Let me get back out of here again. If I come across I think it's down here. Is it down here? No, there's no way off that way. Okay, well what I found was some bloodwood. Which is a tree that grows in the nether. And it hangs upside down. There's some. That's bloodwood. See them trees hanging upside down? Well, I found some in this pack. Ah, there it is. It's down here. I'm sure it is. Hello, you. Go away. Thank you. Good enough. Um, Down here. This here is bloodwood. So I cut some of this down and I used it to make this bow. Bloodwood bow with some of these sticks and some of these flame strings you get off the spiders in the nether. And um, I don't actually know why, but I've been told this is a very good bow to have. So this is why I've been using it. Can I get back out here? So, let me... Oh, I can get back out here. Here we go. I think that was probably the, that was the way I actually found this place, I think. So, I let out of here now, anyway. So, that's the two little things I missed. I did record them, but I must have deleted them somewhere along the line. So, uh, let's get back onto doing this altar, then. So, that upstairs is what a flattened altar looks like. And now this is no longer going to work, of course, because I've got no view to the sun. So I am going to put them Ender-IO capacitors onto my to-do list because we're certainly going to need one for that. Uh, I'll give that a path to the sun, give it a capacitor so it can fill up while we're not using it and then we'll have some energy stored when we need when we need it. So this is your flat footprint for a tier 5 altar. You see it's actually going off the edge of my tower. My tower's only just big enough. Um, these in the corners would be beacons. This is what makes it a tier 5. Tier 5 has 13 runes down each side. A beacon and it needs the beacon needs at least a little bit of a base, so these will be nine blocks of iron or whatever, just to the, the basic tier beacon. Then the next level is two blocks in, one level up. So the rooms for this level, tier four, would actually be here. And then tier four also has one, two, three, four blocks with a bloodstone cap. We haven't made bloodstone yet, but tier four also has. One, two, three, four, and a cap that starts at the same height as the runes. So that would be my tier four all there. Tier three is what we're ready to make is, again, one level higher than that. So that would be one there. So this is where we're actually going to put our runes we're going to make in a minute. And this also has a little bit in the corner. And this has a one, two, with a glowstone cap. So this is what we're going to be making. And then, of course, tier one is one higher still. Uh, sorry, tier two, I mean. Tier two is one higher still, so that's where my tier two runes are going to go. And then, of course, the other itself goes one higher than that. So that's what this is going to eventually look like when it's all tier fived up. It's going to be built up like so. So I've just done this, I've just laid this out so I know where stuff's going to go in the future. Make sense? So, we don't have to lay it all out, but I just wanted to make sure I've got these ones in the right place. So what I can do now is I can go and make all the runes, and we can start putting them down. So, to make runes, let's actually see how much blood I've got in here, just to keep an eye on stuff. We've got 4,000 in there, and I've got 25,000 in there. That's okay, because we're going we're gonna to be moving the altar, so we're going to lose the 4,000 that's in it. So I've made all these, what I'm going to make with all these, is as many sacrifice runes as we can. Now I'm thinking it needs this, it needs this um, orb, so let's grab it. So what we need here is we want 
we get this right, I believe it's like that, and then like that, and then let's uh, do it like that so it should even out. I've done my math right, 24 of these, so 20 and then 4, yeah, so it's like 24 of them. And what I forgot is to get some glowstone blocks, let's go grab 4 of them. We need 4 of them as well. So, over here we go. With my massively spread out base where everything's all over the place. So I need 16 of them. Oops. And I make them into four glowstone blocks. Which we'll need in a minute. <laughs> I've gone through that that gate about six times, forgetting that I can jump over it. Silly me. So say get some food. And off we go. I should have maybe cut there and uh, come back, but never mind. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm actually going to break all this down. Now, I say them four on the outside don't matter that much because they're kind of surplus to use now, them blood runes. What we can do, you can use them for a bit of decoration later. We end up with eight, the eight that we first had when we went, went to tier two. But um, we don't really, really need them, really. So uh, the four k in there is going to get lost. I've got everything I need now to go upstairs. We'll get a better way of going upstairs later. So what we worked out was that's where my altar goes. So let's put the altar down first. I'll just use one of them. Um as a guard for it. There we go. So now go collect that. So around that goes the next we want eight of these around there now because even though that tier two only the four in the middle work once it goes to tier three all eight of these on the outside become active so if we left this as it is if we look at this with our thing it's a tier two again so it should say tier two and it does but these four on the outside are working but as soon as we put these in that are one level out one level down Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and we might as well put a block of dirt in the corner. Because we're going to want a little pillar in each corner of this. So we'll go five this way. One, two, three, four, five. And a base for the pillar. One, two, three, four, five. And then one two three four five cool so now we want our pillars and the pillars can be the actual pillar bit can be made of anything so i'm just going to do it as dirt for now i'm going to swap this for something nicer off camera in a bit when i tidy the rest of this place up so pillar if we look now you'll see it's still a tier two so not tier two what we do now is these glowstone blocks go one on each pillar one Come up here, easy yet. Two, three, and four. And now this should be a tier three. And it is, look, tier three. Cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my crystal up here, my regen crystal. I'm going to start working at filling this guy up. Oops. Like so. I've got regen on me two minutes still. I'll fill this up. I'll tidy all this area up. I'll make it so I can get up and down here a bit easier. And I'll be back in a minute. Okay then, I am back, and I have got all my altar sorted. I've used some redstone blocks for this. I don't know if it's a bit too leery compared to the rest of it, I don't know. But uh, that's redstone blocks chiselled. These actually give out a redstone signal, even when they're chiselled, by the way. That's worth knowing. Um, I've used these stone blocks, they're called poison block, to indicate where the other runes want to go. So, 13 down each side there, and then um, 7 down each side there. That's them um, 8 runes, blood runes, that are left over from your tier 2. That I said I'd just use for a bit of decoration. They don't really fit in with the rest of the stuff around them at the minute. But when the next two other ones with the same texture. They look alright in the corners there. Uh, that's where the blood things will go. That's where the beacon base will go. That's where the beacons will go. So we are all good now. My ultra is full at the minute. What I want to do now is I want to make the next tier orb. 
And the video's up to 24 minutes already, there's 25 minutes already, so I don't know what's going on. I feel like I haven't done that, but this guy takes uh, quite a lot more. Now, of course, every click of the knife now, we are getting more blood because we have got all these sacrifice runes. Once you've got, if you have a full tier 5 all sacrifice, I think it gets like 2,600 LP per stab. Whereas uh, we won't be getting that much at the minute, but we might be getting over a thousand by now. So that's actually drain that really quick. Look at that. So, oh, it's run out. Damn it. See, it went grey then, started flashing grey. That means it's run out of uh, blood in the altar. So I need to keep on top of this. So without regen of some kind, you're going to struggle a bit doing this. So if, you, if you're if you in a mod pack or if you've got the the Geostrata cheaty, uh, cheat, cheaty potion crystals disabled you may want to make sure you've got something like uh, regen potions med or um, ass magic uh, spell if you've got that in your pack or whatever but you're certainly going to want some kind of regen for this you probably can get by without it but uh, there is of course spells from blood magic that I don't really use I'm not sure if I found the healing one but, um, there we go, we have got Magician's Blood Orb. Of course, right click it as always to bind it to here. Now, before our network had a max of 25,000, now we have got a maximum of um, 150,000 LP. So as you can see, it goes up considerably each time you level up. So now let's actually let this settle out a second. So that's got 6150 in there. Let's let it burn that down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make one sigil of this tea up to now. There is a couple of other sigils we can make. I'm going to make one now because I want to do something else for the rest of the episode. Just so we're not doing all blood magic all the time. Blocks of iron. Gold. Ingots. This needs to go to a tier 3 reinforced slate. So of course stone. Then a tier 1 slate. Then a tier 2. Now we're on a tier 3. We can make a tier 3 slate. So that's going to go back in here again. Is that one down now? Let's have a look. Okay, that's empty. We've got 36,070. So, if one's click of the knife. We'll let that drain down again. And we've got... Oops. 36,805. So, we're getting... 700 and... 720, yeah, 735. Right, 735 ish is what we're getting now. If I didn't count that right, uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put this in here. So let me take my orb out there and I'll fill all this up off camera, of course. So I'll get up to 150 by the next episode. I'm going to put some blood into the altar. What I've done is I've put another elevator block here that's going down to where the altar was, and I put the potion crystal right underneath the altar there. Now, this space here that's empty now will become important later when we get to tier 4 we can start making rituals and we'll have rituals up there that'll do certain things for us one of them is uh, the ritual we're going to use initially called the ritual of the feathered knife stops you needing to use a knife here it will just it'll just damage us by being close to it which is very nice so stick loads of uh, that's going to be full anyway so we'll stick that in there you see this is going to start working again so it's going to go from tier 2 to a tier 3 So do, 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 on it goes. Take a little bit of time. Maybe a lot of time. Want to sing you a song? I know there's a couple of people who would like me to, but I'm not going to. Oh, come on. It takes ages. Now, you can speed this up by having speed runes in some of your slots instead of sacrifice runes, but I prefer to get the maximum sacrifice myself um, it's a little bit awkward for videos but I generally do this when I'm watching videos or something else so I, I don't mind it taking a little bit longer I, you can automate this as well which we'll get to at some point wow it does take a long time let's put some more blood in Come on. There we go. Now it's a tier 3 called an imbued slate. We use our new magician's blood orb. 
that gives us this guy love this guy this is a sigil of magnetism what this does is anything that i drop on the floor it's going to suck up back to me sweet so now any blocks that drop anywhere stuff like that when i'm manning this will suck in really nice uh, if you played with xeno's reliquary it's like the coin of fortune if you played with magic beads it's like the sig it's like the magnetism mysterious magnet but this actually works better than both of them in my opinion um it just it pulls nicer than both Where'd that go? Not really. Did I throw it off the edge? <laughs> um, right. So, that's what we're going to do with Blood Magic. I'm going to get a couple of things ready to make us an endothermic pump. I'll be back in a bit. Okay then, back. And as you can see, I've got 150,000 LP in my... Uh, I've got 10,000 uh, in the tier 3 altar. And I've got 150,000 in my LP network. So that's nice and awesome. I've got loads of stuff here to, for the rest of the episode. I'm going to bang all these into my main inventory. This is all the bits we're going to use for what I want to finish the episode up with. So what I want is I want a nether lava source for future power. Now, I'm going to use it to power some redstone stuff, some uh, thermal expansion stuff, probably in the next episode. We're eventually going to go into a thing called Big Reactors. That's a really cool mod in this. That's really fuel efficient, so it's worth using. But uh, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, we want to craft a couple of bits up. Now, I've got a little bit extra that I'm going to do before I go, so I'm going to make a drum for this. These old 16 buckets, we can make a drum that holds uh, 256 buckets. This is filling up too quick for me to use. So, I, I don't want to waste it. I want to make sure I keep getting stuff, so I'm going to make a bigger drum. Anyway, the first one I'm going to make is called an endothermic pump. This is a pump I told you about earlier. It, it actually chunk loads itself. It's uh, very good and efficient. I've not got the stuff for the pickaxe. I knew I'd forget some of it. Uh, there's three more iron ingots. So I guess I'm making it down here. Um, and there's three more iron ingots out of my ingot chest. One, two, three. And a couple of sticks from over here. So I guess I'll make stuff down here. So the first thing we need is the... The... Um, there we go. Two of them. It's in the thermic pump. So as you can see, bucket of lava, bucket of water, diamond... Some of these things, ender infused obsidian, an iron pickaxe, and an eye of ender. Eye of ender is nice and easy, that's just uh, ender pearl and the blaze powder. Thank you very much. And then these. Um, okay, in here. These, uh, next thing we need is the ender infused obsidian. Now that's just four obsidian around an ender pearl. Gets you four of them, which is nice. One, two, three, four. Our diamond goes there. A water bucket goes there, lava bucket there, eye vendor goes there, and what's the last thing I'm missing? Of course, it's the pick that I've not made. The pick, I forgot it again already. Look, that gets us that thing. There's our endothermic pump. Now, for that, we're going to need uh, an engine. So, what we're going to make is what's called a, a magmatic dynamo from thermal expansion. Now the reason why we're going to use a magmatic dynamo here is because we can feed it lava that it pumps back into it so we don't have to send it any fuel. It'll fuel itself while it's there. So you can see this uses a lot of invar. If you remember we made invar before. We uh, made some invar in there. I've actually got another 10 left in there still. And that was made from a mixture of iron and ferrous ingots, which is nickel. So we've got some of that stuff. So what we want first of all is two gears, which is just some invar around iron. That gets us the gears. And we also need a silver ingot with a redstone either side of it to get us oops, this thing called the redstone transmission coil. Now, these coils in thermal expansion, engines, dynamos have transmission. Um, there's the energy ones have... Conduct, ah, there's different type of coils, but they're, they, they all actually make sense. Let's have a look at them. So reception coils are machines that receive power. Transmission coils are dynamos that put out power. And conductance coils are things that hold power, like the um, energy cells. So nice and actually make a lot of sense. So what we want is gear there, a gear there, a bit of redstone there, and our other three invar ingots like so. So that's got us that. Then we're going to need a bit of a bit of fluid duct, some kind of liquid pipe to get the 
liquid from there back into that because it can't put it straight into it. So what I'm going to make is some fluid duct. I kind of give it away there. So we'll get six fluid ducts for two bits of copper and a bit of lead. Later on, we'll be upgrading these to these ones that you can see through. But we need hardened glass for that. We're not at, not at the stage of making that yet. We need a machine called an induction smelter. But for now, we've got that. And then, of course, we need the equivalent of uh, ender chest but for liquid. It's called an ender tank from the same mod. So I'm going to make a couple of ender tanks, one for this end, one for the other end. And there, again, pretty straightforward. First of all, what we need is some cauldrons. And I actually need three of these in total. So I'm going to make all three right now. So one, two, three of them. We only need two for this bit, though. Um, they have a bit of obsidian either side. A blaze rod in each corner. A couple of um, ender pearls. And a couple of bits of wool. Do that the wrong way around. they go ender tank. What I'm going to do is, before we do this... I am going to get a rose, make it into two rose dye, rose red dye, dye my wool red. So now, now we make it with red wool, it'll actually come out with the red symbols on top. So there's one, and I didn't get enough obsidian. And there's the other. So if we place this down, you'll see, oops, there's not one way to place down, put that up again. Place that down, you see it's come out red. So a lava red makes sense, it does to me at least, so I usually use lava, uh, I usually use red I mean for lava. For now a creeper blew up right in here, I think it spawned on top of there, it blew one of my work tables up. So I need to sort my lighting out in here, and a way to stop mobs from coming in. What I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to leave this here, the receiving one, until we get some machines to run off it. And the other one, all the rest of this stuff is coming to the nether with me, so what you're going to do is... Throw the stuff we don't need into there for now. We'll come back to that in a bit. Um, what do I need that? Oh yeah, I don't need that for. Um, oh, by the way, I had 39 levels, so I enchanted my bow. Uh, I was hoping to get um, Infinity, but I didn't get Infinity. I think Infinity might... Oh no, Infinity's a vanilla mod. Um, there was a mod that you could use that was in that meant you didn't have to have an arrow if you had Infinity, but I think they've taken that out. Anyway. I didn't get infinity anyway. Infinity is the one you want because that means it doesn't actually use arrows. You just have to carry one on you. But um, I'll leave that there even though I've, I've put the arrows away so I might as well put that away. I? So what I need to do now is go into the nether. And we need to get a spot down at the lava level. Let's jump up here. And uh, in case it jumped I might as well get regen on me. And I? So I'll run up there. Get regen from my cheaty potion crystal. And now into the nether, which I believe is over here somewhere. Big hill, place spawner. So I'm actually not near a lava source here, am I? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut camera, I'm going to work my way down here to the edge of this lava river. In fact, what I'm going to do off camera really quickly, I'm run away from them guys, I'm going to make another couple of books. Got two leather, let's just do it. And what we've got in there? One, two. I'm going to make two books. I'm going to make one to bring me back here. I'm going to have to get a couple of stands out of Yeah, I've got none in there. Uh, I'll make one book that will bring me right back to this spot. I'll take that one with me. And place it down where they're going to put the pump. And I'll take that one with me and I'll make that there. I'll That one will get me back, I mean. And I'll make one at the pump to get me there. So I'll, I'll meet you back when I've found a decent place to place this stuff. Okay then, I've got a book, I'm just banging it in there, I'm going to change the name of it to Lava Pump so I know where it goes to. Um, always worth doing that, I find. Makes it things a little bit easier to uh, know where you're going. So off we go to Lava Pump. What I've done is I've made a little stone brick enclosure here to stop ghasts being able to get me. I'm down near the lake, I'm just a little bit away from my portal. My portal's just up, up that hill somewhere. Uh, just up here somewhere around here. Anyway, what we're going to do then is I'm going to place this. Now I can never remember if it was the same level or the level below. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it up here. I might have to move this later once I've run it for a bit. We'll see. Um, and the thing pump goes there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this sigil of magnetism on. Because if we do have to break anything, there's a lot more chance of it jumping back into my inventory than falling into the lava and burning. Uh, what we're going to do is 
I said he says nearly throwing something straight into the lava. We're gonna put the dynamo next to it like so. And then our fluid ducts are gonna go there and there. And what I need actually is I need to pram the motor and pram the dynamo with one bucket of lava. Just so it's got some in it. What that's gonna start doing is gonna start pumping that. So if we put our ender tank on top there. You'll see, it's going to fill up. Pumping lava, you see what it's doing? It's actually, the lava blocks it's taking, it's swapping for smooth stone. So what it's going to do, each block it takes, it's going to gradually swap right across there. Now, there is that one block I took for the bucket there. So I could, let me put that back to start with interest. So let's go, that's going to smooth it off again. You see, each bucket's worth of lava it takes, we're not actually using it. So what it's done, it's filled that up. It's filling that with power, so it's using some. What this will do is it's running at power. It's gradually, because it's filling up and not sending the power anywhere, not, it's not having to pump because this is full and that's full. So that's gradually slowing down. And it'll gradually slow down so it's doing 2 RF a tick, which is 0.2 MJ a tick. And it'll use a little bit of lava up doing it. So you don't actually have to turn these off. You can set these to turn off. I like to anyway. You don't need to. Later on, we'll use a thing called a Billcraft gate, and we'll have that up here on a structure pipe we'll have it so that if this is full then this will turn off but because this chunk loads itself if we look at our um opus you'll see that we've got a load of chunks see that it's an extra utility is 25 what that's doing that's the the endothermic pump here is chunk loaded than 25 chunks and that's its range so it can pull lava from wherever there's lava within 25 chunks it can pull. So as we use more, it'll swap each block. It'll go down to as deep as it can as well. It'll swap each block for stone. So when we come back in here in a few weeks' time, if we start using a lot of lava, we'll see that all this will be smooth stone or cobble across here as, uh, as it spreads. So there we go. Really simple little lava source. And you see, it took me only a couple of minutes to set up. So back we go. And then what, so what we've got now is, if I sleep, so I don't get jumped by any creepers, we could now set up something at this end to use that lava, which we'll look at next episode. Oh. What we've got here, same as the end of chest that holds the items. We've got this other one here. If we just right click that on the front, see the little toggle there, blue or orange. Orange means output. So if we had any kind of tank here, we could start outputting lava into the tank and it start filling the tank up. Or if we had something that used lava to produce power, we could have that there. Wonderful. So then last thing then I want to do, just before we go, I want to make one of these drums that I mentioned. These are really cool. Probably the best, cheapest way of storing liquids at the minute for me. You can make tanks from Railcraft that are still very popular, and you can make them a lot bigger. But with a little bit of messing about, and making a little fun contraption, you can make these things called drums, and you can make a little system that will... That's what I want to do the cauldron for, by the way. If I make a little system that can swap your drums in and out once you've got an AE system going, which uh, I've done on my Utopia series, and it's one of my favourite builds I've done this uh, recently. I've quite enjoyed making it, and it works very nice, so I, I do like it. I want two weighted pressure plates, which are just iron pressure plates. They go either side of a cauldron, which is a vanilla item. These are vanilla items as well. And then we just want some steel down the sides. Gets us this guy called a drum. You can fill these from the top or the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it up here. And I'm going to use another one of my fluid ducts that we made. I'm going to stick that underneath there. And what I'm going to do here is with a wrench. Have I got a wrench yet? I don't even know if I've got a wrench. Oh yeah, I've got a crescent hammer. Wonderful. I'm going to disconnect that one. I'm going to have that one as an output. And uh, I'm going to make another one of them servo things that we made last time. Like so. Now, stick that on there. That I, I always stick actually on the thing, but the server's actually going in that block. So we could get out. We could use the we could use that as a power output as well now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to say ignore redstone. So that's lit up. So now it's going to it's going to store 256 drums worth barrel 256 buckets worth in there. So that's 16 buckets. That's 16 buckets. So there's 32. There's another 256. So you can see we've got quite a lot of drum storage. So it's only going to pump out the top half, so it's going to keep that bottom one full as well, which is nice. 
So we've got some in there. If we want to get more, we can just really quickly switch that, switch that, and then it'll put it back in there for us. So it's just a couple of bits with a wrench. Oh, so that's putting out automatically, is it? No. There we go. So that's filling that up. Wonderful. So uh, that's all we've got for today. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope it was entertaining. I hope I taught you something, hopefully. Uh, keep the comments coming. Keep the corrections coming, because I'll get things wrong as well. Uh, I don't know everything. This is just the way I do stuff. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope I see you next time. Cheers. Bye.